This was sent to me. I will put it in the chitty chat. I will put it in the chat, won't I? This is Movie Meditations. This is a small channel, so go ahead and like and subscribe. Let's give them a chance to blow up. This video, literally, they have 1,000 subscribers, and the channel has 100,000 views because, of course, <laughs> it's probably that great. Let's go. Okay, let's go ahead. In the episode titled The Fortune Teller, what's clear is that Aang's... Oh, whoa. Meditate. On what attaches you to this world? Yo, that's super low. Let's talk about volume control, my bro. Meditate on what attaches you to this world. You've probably heard of the show Avatar The Last Airbender. I have. But did you know it's the seventh highest rated show of all time on yep. IMBD? It should Not be. Not the seventh highest rated animated show of all time, but the seventh highest rated show of all time. As it should be, it is a yearly watch. You need to watch this show through and through every year just to stay based. Time. So why is this show so highly rated? Well, many factors. The superb world building, the captivating character development, the beautiful music, and many other factors. But one main reason is the surprising spiritual depth and maturity of the show, which allows it to resonate with kids and adults alike True. still more than 15 years later. Many of those spiritual moments from the show that the internet has clung on to for the past decade or more have come in the form of quotes delivered by Uncle Iroh. But there's another spiritual lesson which has caused some significant confusion among viewers and yet has some very practical applications when understood correctly. It's something that has been taught by many spiritual leaders of the past and present, and it has to do with the relationship between Aang and Katara. Welcome what? to Movie Meditations. Oh, okay. Let's energy bend our minds into the present moment and explore the lesson you probably missed from Avatar The Last Let's Airbender. Go. Many shows for teens and adults alike will have a sort of will-they-won't-they they relationship that will keep people invested. We see from early episodes that Aang is crushing on Katara. But unlike the will-they-won't-they they relationships of many TV shows, especially soap operas, Don't cry, baby! The writers treat <laughs> Such a good episode. ...treated this dynamic with respect, and in doing so, allowed a beautiful spiritual lesson to reveal itself through this aspect of the show. Massive spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen this show yet, you need to- If you haven't seen this show, not only just do you deserve to be spoiled, but, okay, you need to get on that right now. I think it's on Netflix. I think it's literally everywhere. Close this app right now and start your journey into the world of Avatar True. The Last Airbender. But just very quickly to get everyone on the same page, the story follows Aang, the last surviving air nomad, and the Avatar, who is tasked with mastering all four elements and bringing the world into balance. Alongside his friends Katara, Sokka, and eventually Toph, Aang embarks on a journey to defeat the imperialistic Fire Nation and its ruthless Fire Lord, who seek to conquer the world. Katara is a skilled waterbender who finds Aang trapped in an iceberg for what has been a hundred years, and as they travel together, their bond deepens. And this leads to one of the main dramatic tensions of the series. Aang being caught between his duty as the Avatar mm -hmm. and his personal desires, mm -hmm. particularly so, okay, obviously, like, we're related to my work, so I'm not just watching this person's video, right? Even though it's fire and you guys should definitely check, go check it out. It's a very short video. Obviously, I've talked about this before in my own Levels video. This is why I use Avatar The Last Airbender as an example of my introspection system because this show forces introspection and it forces Aang to literally face his obligation as an avatar and a consciousness, as a relationship with Katara and the people around him. It is, like, the best. It's... Mm. Like, it's such a good show in this regard. It's just so honest about people and their faults and how you can be the fire lord, you could be the fire nation and still seek redemption, right? Remember that the fire nation also has family and children that are innocent because they are also believing the propaganda as much as the rest of the world believes their own. And just keep, to keep in mind, like, in every part of the world that Avatar went into, it wasn't exactly always accepting of him, whether they were Fire Nation or not. So this idea that there's like a good guy and a bad guy that's super clear is why this show is so good because it's never super clear. His desire for a romantic relationship. Like I said, from the beginning, it's clear he's crushing on Katara, but his responsibility as the Avatar and the mission that they are on seem to come in the way of pursuing that relationship. This tension really starts to show its head toward the end of book one in the episode titled <laughs> The Fortune Teller. What's clear is that Aang's destiny is intimately tied to the fate of the world. Uh, yeah, I knew that already. But he didn't <laughs> say anything about a girl. But he also just wants uh, to know the fate of his romance. That part, do you guys remember it? 
Do you remember? She's like, oh my gosh, there's a huge weight on your shoulders and the world is waiting for you. He's like, yeah. It's so like perfectly innocent. And it's that thing we all face in our life, which is like everyone sees us one way as this like great leader as an example who has this great expectation, but really just want to like hold hands and cuddle and be like, that's my girl. And like I'm in love. And I think that's like the nuance of all the different parts of us. We are so many different parts. We're not just the avatar. Romantic life. <laughs> the more Aang hankers for his romantic feelings to be reciprocated, the more he becomes out of alignment with himself and even pushes Katara away. And we see this pattern play out several times in the series. In the episode Ember Island Players, mm, Aang's mm -hmm. feverishness comes to a head as he forces a conversation and a kiss, which ends up not being received very well. Consent violation, consent violation. But the episode that really dives into this conflict head on is one of my favorite television episodes of all mm -hmm. time. At mm -hmm. the end of the second season, there is an episode titled The Guru. And it's most famous for a clip that has gone viral several times in the last decade, hmm. where Guru Patik takes Aang through the seven chakras, an unheard of thing for an American television program up to that point. Yet the Guru's lesson for the seventh and final chakra is a bit controversial, and one that I would argue has been misinterpreted and misunderstood by many fans of the show. Ooh, really? I never knew that. What? I don't know about this clip going viral. I don't have that relationship with Avatar part of the, I'm not on the Avatar part of the internet. But before he says the answer, obviously I assume he's going to say the answer that like, it seems obvious to me. I thought this episode was so obvious. Oh my God. Oh, I'm so excited. What is the assumed, oh my gosh, I bet he better tell us what do people think it means? Because to me, there's only one thing it means. I've never thought this scene meant anything but w one single thing, which was like, of course, to like be the avatar, you have to like let go of Katara, which obviously leads you back to Katara, but you have to like let go of the attachment you have. It's about letting go of attachment to be like a fully, like Everyone thinks of letting go of attachment as like not being materialistic or letting go of people you love or like rejecting everybody and living in the woods. But letting go of attachment, right, it has like a deeper, more profound meaning and relationship to like your idea of control. Let it go. You never had the control in the first place, right? So I am so curious what what people thought it meant. Oh. Guru Patik tells Aang that he needs to let go of his worldly attachment of Katara if he wants to unlock control of the Avatar state. Aang is surprised and disturbed by this. What? Why would I let go of Katara? He reluctantly agrees, but then his expanded consciousness taps into Katara being in trouble and he goes to save her, foregoing unlocking the Avatar state. Later, with Iroh, Aang reflects on if this was a wise decision or not, and Iroh suggests that it was probably the right call. I think you are very wise to choose happiness and love. So what's the deal here? Was the guru misleading Aang? Was Iroh right? Why did Aang need to let go of Katara? Three chakras ago, that was a good thing. <laughs> well, the nuance that I didn't understand at the time of first watching this show, before my exploration into yoga, spirituality, and the nature of the mind, is that Guru Patik isn't saying Aang needs to let go of Katara as in never see her again or stop his feelings for her, but that he needs to let go of his mental attachment or his feverishness towards her. It's a subtle distinction and one that not only has caused confusions for viewers of the show, but one that has caused confusion for spiritual seekers from time immemorial. One way huh. we can look at this is Guru Patik is asking Aang to Okay, this is, I gotta ask, because I grew up religious, and this is a common thing in Catholicism. You give it up to the Lord. Like, this is very, very common thinking in religion, at least in Catholicism. Like, I was taught as a child to give up my struggles, my anxieties, my sense of control to the Lord. Like, I was taught from a young age to let go, but of course, we hold on to feelings, we hold on to anger, like, there's whole parables about this so that's so interesting that people even as a child even as a child we knew this like we were of course when you grow up it's a beautiful lesson like it gave me some I'm so sorry I'm gonna say this out loud but I don't even mean it to sound the way it is I do not understand what normies are doing when they're watching things like what what are you guys doing like what are people doing it doing maybe my religious bubble just gave up gave me so much introspective tools that I never realized that that's why people don't really en masse maybe relate to the journey. Because if you're watching Avatar, and I again, I watch the show. We watch the show as a family every year with my parents. 
But none of us ever went into the fandom. So I don't know what people are saying about it, literally. Are they literally watching this episode and not getting it? We would talk about it with my parents. We would sit around. We would, we would you know, talk about like, oh, what is he trying to symbolize? You know what I mean? That is so interesting. It's a very interesting. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's not the, an easy concept to truly understand. Interesting. I feel like it's out of character for Uncle Iroh to not understand that. Well, I think what Uncle Iroh is telling him, because Uncle Iroh is not a five. The guru is a five, right? So the guru is like five plus, let's say. Iroh isn't a five till Korra. So at that moment, Iroh didn't understand. He didn't have the wisdom yet. That's why I argue that Iroh is not a five till Korra. Because Iroh did not understand. He had to let go of Zuko and his harboring for Zuko. He had to go through his whole journey of introspection. Again, refer to my levels in the description if you guys want to see how I feel about Avatar and Iroh. But I personally feel like Iroh couldn't have given him, him that advice. Iroh gave him a very two advice in that moment because that's what he had a relationship with. Because Iroh was in his own journey at the time. So that makes sense. Iroh and the Guru are completely different introspective spaces at the time. The guru is giving him like the real answers and Iroh's giving him the bubble answer, which is the best one he could give at the time. Right. Um, let me see. Like you understand, but not to your core. I think that's true. I think as a child, I definitely understood the concept, but I get I think I got to it faster as an adult or it made sense to me. Maybe it made sense through the show, though. Like I never misunderstood it from the show. I didn't know how to do it, though. Like, that was different. I knew what it was, but I didn't know how to do it until later. Um, yeah, bro, just uh, let me see. Bro, people just watching moving pictures and nice storylines. I guess I just never thought about it, right? Brittany, a five as a kid? No, I was not. I was not. Absolutely not. Um, when I first watched, let's see. When I first watched when I was eight or nine, I really couldn't wrap my head around it. I was never religious in that way. Fair. Fair, fair, fair. And they said, even in Christian circles, I see people can give it up to the Lord, but not uh, extrapolate or use it for other earthly connections. It doesn't click for many. I think that's true. Yeah, you're right. I observed that as well. So what would be Iroh's an answer at that time if he was a five? Similar to the guru. Similar. He would have said to let it go. He would have said, in that moment, you did what was best. Okay, as a five to Aang, he would have said, you did what you thought was best in the moment. And now you have to reflect and decide, did it lead you to your ultimate path or did it take you on a side journey for a moment and the truth is is it took Aang on a side journey for a moment and Aang still has to realign himself so the truth is is that Aang did make the wrong decision but there is no wrong decision right there's only the decision the consciousness makes in the moment so there is no wrong decision there's just the decision right and now he can realign find himself the way he was supposed to he had to like yeah it's time for you to look inwards like he had to make that decision but I don't think Iroh would have, like, scolded him or something. You know what I mean? To let go of the specific conditions that he is holding onto in his mind for love to exist or to be expressed. Okay, hear me out. At that point, <laughs> Aang believes he will be in lack if he doesn't get to be with Katara. If she's not his partner, if they don't get to be together, he will be unhappy, incomplete, and not in love. Guru Patik needs to eliminate this seed of lack from his consciousness. In oh my God, this is not perfectly aligned with what I've been saying. If you are still stuck on the narrative that you need a partner to be happy, you haven't let go. If you are still stuck on the idea that you need a Ferrari to be happy, you have not let go. If you are still stuck on happiness instead of joy, you have not let go. You don't have to let go. You can hold on. You can hold on until it literally kills you. You can hold on until your depression consumes you. You can hold on as long as you would like. But you can also let go at any moment when you're ready. No rush. But I recommend you do it now. But no rush. Order for him to unlock his highest potential. And it makes sense that for Aang to reach his full spiritual awakening, as represented by being able to access the Avatar state, that he would need to see things from a higher perspective, a perspective where he is in full connection to all of the elements and all of the cosmic mm -hmm. energy. And in Which is why I said, I don't know if I said this in my levels video, but even his other avatar states were necessarily fives, like Kyoshi, not a five, bro, right? Like even the other avatar states couldn't get there. They couldn't give him the advice of a five. They all gave him the advice of like twos. And then Aang himself, maybe Aang is the first avatar to reach five. 
In such a perspective, there can be no lack, no ignorance. To connect with the unlimited cosmic power, it makes sense that he has to move beyond the finite nature of a mindset which implies separateness. The greatest illusion of this world is the illusion of separation. And move into a space of infinity. This is in alignment with the deep spiritual wisdom of masters of the past and present. In the New Testament, Jesus says as much in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 30, where he instructs us not to worry and be feverish about how things will turn out, and instead first seek the kingdom of God and righteousness, and then all good things will come to you. And when we tap into that knowledge, when we learn to drop our anxieties, our feverishness, then not only will we attract the right people into our life, romantic or otherwise, but more than that, we can reach our highest potential, tap into the immense wisdom and power deep within us, just like Aang. So how, 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 how can we tap into this experience of dropping the worries and anxieties and internal lack and instead feel that connection to the source of love and power that we are, that kingdom of God that Jesus refers to. Breathing and meditation is a very practical path to feeling this connection, not just intellectually, but experientially. To unlock your full potential, to eliminate the feelings of lack, follow the path of Aang, breathe, meditate, and do service. If you do these things, then I promise that you will feel that abundance, that connection, and that deep love start to move through you regardless of the circumstances and situations around you. But I'm curious, leave a comment below to let me know if you're already an avid meditator, just starting out, not interested at all, or anywhere in between. Looking forward to hearing from you, and I hope this is enough for you to meditate on until next time. Love it. Let's leave comments. Great video. Guys, go leave a comment and a where's a heart emoji. Thank you. Let's put this sparkly emoji. Boom. Okay. I liked it. I commented it. Did you guys see the link? Great video. So good. Mm. Simple, short, to the point. Didn't realize. And again, I'm blinded like everybody else. I really don't know what I was raised with that separates me from other people at all times. I'm never really sure, you know? So when I sit there and I think, oh, yes, like, give it to God, separate the consciousness, let go of worldly things, be one with the spirit. Like, my brain's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And of course, like I said, I didn't know how to do it. I just knew that I was supposed to. But I never thought of somebody watching Avatar not understanding. I never thought they literally thought like Aang that I'd have to let go of Katara. I never processed that. I thought it was so obvious, even the way the show was written. I thought it was so obvious. You know what I'm saying? So I love the idea that the fandom was like, um, what? Nero says it's hard to let go uh, having OCD, which forces me to do the opposite. Well, good news is I know people with like pretty severe OCD and they're actually very introspective and they do it very well, but it's a learned, it's a learned skill, right? You have to learn how to do it, but that's the irony. I can't let go. I have OCD. It's hard to do it because I have OCD. Your that's your chain. You've built it, you named it and you dubbed it. You literally said, Hmm, I'm going to call this thing something. I'm going to call it OCD, which is real, but you've dubbed your OCD the reason why. And then introspection is asking your question, is it the really the OCD or is it you yourself? Because I separate those things. I don't think people are their OCD. I think people have OCD in the same way that I'm not my borderline. I have borderline. So the question is, is there a version of your brain that knows how to be your consciousness, not your brain, even your consciousness that knows how to be that isn't having a relationship with your OCD in that moment? And that's the question. Now, again, I don't have OCD. Uh, one of my former callers did, and they and I would go back and forth constantly about uh, introspection and philosophy, and they were very good at eventually uh, – they did it, I think – I would say before they even started calling me, though I'm not sure you would have to ask them, but I feel like they're very good at knowing their consciousness, you know? And so then that's the question, is what's the relationship you're having with this thing you're now attached to, right? You're letting go of the attachment you have, which is which is difficult, right? Your family at least shares ideas and talks. My family tries to tries, but argues and communications break down. Yeah, I will say, to be fair, my family argues as well. And we argued for a lot of our life, but we also have a lot of great conversation. So to be fair, it's true. My family, my family, all of us, like extended family as well, we do facilitate conversation pretty well. We're very open 
even though we're very sure of ourselves, we're pretty open, you know? I would say that's, yeah, I'm really lucky in that way. Today I chose to eat the cupcake. Namaste. Oh, I think a lot of people tap into it and then get out and then get back into the cycle throughout life for sure. Yeah, that was a great video. Short, easy, simple, to the point. Nice video, but not going to lie. I didn't get no attachment till Fight Club, but Fight Club is one of the movies that most influenced me. Interesting. Interesting. Did you read the book or just see the movie? Dun, 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 dun. My OCD was so hard to detach from without meditation. Wishing you the best on your recovery. Yes, meditation. Let's go. The way you guys talked about what the episodes mean is so dope. My parents are very, like my mom is an avid reader. She reads more than I do. My mom's read thousands more books than I've ever read. My mom's just like, she just like, like she just reads like a mad woman. And she reads mostly philosophy and religious and spiritual books. So my mom is just consuming all of these things. And so she does facilitate those conversations with her kids. And then of course my, my dad's interested in politics and introspection himself. And so they definitely did it a lot. Of course, because they can't leave their Catholic bubble, the introspection has a limitation because they have an attachment to God, but, and they can't let that attachment go, obviously, um, but still, it's it's really interesting, and they both meditate, right, in their own way. They just do it in a more Catholic-oriented way. Um, Yeah. Let's go, Caitlin. Caitlin says, it is possible 100%. Have you thought about consuming any content of people healing from their OCD and breaking their patterns? Seeing other people achieve something allows us to see the possibility. True, I never knew I could get recovery through um, my DBT with my borderline until I met a board woman with borderline who told me, hey, do you know you can hit recovery? And I was like, shut up. Like you can hit remission basically. And I was like, no. And then I went and I did the work and I've been good for like four years now, which is like amazing. And then me, I became that thing for other people um, who also didn't realize it. And then they found my videos and the cycle continues. It's why like it's good to live by example. So you give people hope by just recovering yourself. It's kind of nice. My mom signed me up for a speed reading class one summer and you can learn and practice it. I've ADHD and it helped a lot. That's so interesting. I never knew they had like speed reading classes. Yeah, I do wonder if philosophy is almost like real philosophy. No offense. Is too woo woo for people. Like there's like, again, when I watch the debate bros do philosophy stuff, like it's not, it's philosophy. It's all philosophy, but it's like, it's so limiting. It's like so two bubble philosophy that it's not, again, I'm like, is is what I call, de I don't know what to call it, but like, you know, more introspective philosophy is it just not of course it's not interesting well that's why I think most of the world is twos because it's not interesting to people it should be the number one thing on all of our for you pages and that's why I say the world is a reflection of the masses because if the masses were interested in introspection that would be what is popular <laughs> and I just feel like that's the problem we don't live in a we've never lived in a society where that is the most popular We've only lived in the society where it's performatively like sounding interesting and some pockets of it show it. But that's what's interesting about people, I guess, is, yeah, hmm. I'm having like a little epiphany of my own little bubble popping of my own of Avatar fans. I never thought that concept was, could be confusing because they say it so clearly in the show that Aang is confused and therefore he is the one who's obviously making the mistake. So if you're thinking like Aang, you're making the mistake. But then the audience didn't understand it because they didn't even understand they were in the cycle of the mistake because they didn't even have the concept or relationship with the idea of letting go of attachment. Beautiful. I love bubbles. I love them all. I love the bubbles. I love them so much. Philosophy is highly metaphysical, so it's hard for people that only have a relationship with material reality to tap into it or allow themselves to since they don't have much of a reference point. That's true. Which is so ironic because one of the criticisms that I get from philosophy fans is like, why is Brittany talking about philosophy? None of this is philosophy. Like, this isn't philosophy. She didn't even reference like some of the basic philosophies. Like, why isn't she talking about stoicism in a deep, profound way? And why isn't she talking about this and this and this? And I'm like, that's so funny because you jump into other philosophy circles and they're like, oh, yeah, that's like a philosophy channel. They're talking about life and introspection and self-help and growth. We all have even a different relationship with the word in like philosophy, which is so interesting to me. Um, so yeah. Hmm. 
Okay, let's go ahead and hop into the next video. That video was great. Please go like and subscribe to the movie Meditations. It's a pretty, it's a pretty cool title, you know. And this video got a lot of views, bro. It only came out eight days ago. So go check that out. I linked it in the chat. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Let's go to the next one.